Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I like call and response. Um, I am honored to be here. And I, before I talk about some of the cool projects I've been working on, I want to talk about STEM and STEAM specifically. So STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Um, you may have heard of STEM, which is basically STEAM without the A for art. Um, I actually see art is, um, sort of on the same level as STEM, so as opposed to secondary or something on the side. So in terms of STEM, when we talk about STEM, we actually talk about it in terms of education policy, curriculum, um, specifically around increasing technological competitiveness, um, and that is kind of where we are in terms of STEM currently, but we also have this issue where we have a group, um, group certain groups of people that are not um, well represented or engaged in STEM at all. So this is a chart from the National Science Foundation, and um, you can see it here, and it kind of tells a story about where we are in terms of diversity in STEM. So despite benefits of pursuing um, study in STEM, underrepresented ethnic groups such as African Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans are under 10% and they represent less than 10% of professionals in STEM. Even when after they graduate with a degree in STEM, they are less likely to pursue jobs in STEM. So at, even after graduation. So this is um, an actual um, fairly recent chart um, and it, and it kind of gets a little better but not much um, every year for the last couple of years. On the other hand, we have a study from the National, um, National Endowment for the Arts, which shows that students from, un, or students from underrepresented groups in general, particularly from lower socioeconomic groups, they, in terms of STEM and art, they are more engaged. So their test scores go up and they actually do better in science and math when they're active, actively engaged in the arts. So that's an important study and there's some other studies that are very similar to show that the arts is pretty important in terms of relevant to young people who are maybe not seeing themselves in STEM at all. Um, I argue that you know, in order to engage the groups that are not in this picture, we sort of have to show them how artists from their groups um, redefine and use technologies in ways that may engage them or, or interest them later on. So they sh how are these artists shaping the way they uh, engage in their communities? How are these artists using science in their work or mathematics or technology and so on? So if we show them how these artists are defining or redefining and using these new technologies, it is possibly a way to get the folks who are not in STEM or STEAM more engaged. And so that's kind of important. So more specifically, I want to talk about inclusion. And um, Dr. Mae Jemison, who is an American physician and a NASA astronaut, she has this to say about inclusion in STEM. She said, I believe that it was incumbent upon me when I went up into space to bring people with me who normally would not be included. These things were important because so many times folks are left out. And if I couldn't do anything else, I could bring people up with me and so on. And this idea of inclusion is not only important for schools that are serving underrepresented ethnic groups, but even any learning space should actually be open to building capacity to engage all people in STEM and STEAM. So this is my slide. I actually reduced the number of innovators that I've um, so, um, how many people know anybody in this slide at all? Let's see a few hands. These are um, actually folks that are innovating in some way that represent the groups that you, we saw that are not engaged in STEM. And so I wanted to point out, we have Ben Hardy at the top. Ben Hardy, um, if you ever saw the movie Easy Rider, he's the guy that innovated the motorbike that was stolen from the set, Easy Rider, but apparently changed the industry <laughs> for, that, for that, so, and most people didn't know he was African American until Jay Leno wrote a book about it fairly recently. We also have, there's a film called Underwater Dreams about a group of um, Chicano students from, I think, Arizona that beat MIT in a robotics competition in 2006 from high school. Um, in the middle is Vanessa Ramos Velasquez, who's a Brazilian artist who's based in Berlin, who oftentimes does a lot of work with technology and science and someone I know who I've actually met in Istanbul. 
and she and it will be doing something in um, New Mexico next fall. Um, Kelvin Doe was brought from Sierra Leone in Africa, was brought over by MIT because of his innovations that he was doing, and eventually at the age of 16, got hired out by a Canadian company and gave, given a research lab to invent, I think he was innovating solar panels for his, com for his community in Sierra Leone. And Hank Shockley, um, which I'll talk a little bit more later, he is known as the Phil Spector of hip hop. <laughs> Um, was inducted with Public Enemy in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a couple of years ago. This is him in a, a hacker space in Minneapolis. So this idea that artists have found ways to forge their own personal and group aesthetic with cultural ethos and do-it-yourself practices is very important. This is Grandmaster Flash and sort of the kickoff for my own PhD research. He um, did a lot of work, audio mixers, created and playing around when he was a teenager in the Bronx. He innovated and actually created the Crossfader, which is now in the Smithsonian collection. So he, um, and talks a lot about using the scientific method to invent the Crossfader. So, and so this guy is talking about going from analog technology to digital technology, but he did all this in the Bronx, in his mother's kitchen, using Radio Shack and junk. Um, so he's an innovator. And he's also innovating in terms of scratching and all this kind of stuff that we all talk about in the next slide. But software developers started looking at these practices in terms of how they actually create software. So MIT Media Lab actually came up with a program called Scratch, which is based on DJing, um, scratching, mixing, and sampling content to create new scenarios, new projects. So um, there have been sort of, because of this idea of scratching and mixing content and code and, and that kind of thing, there have been a lot of other projects related to Scratch or similar to Scratch. Um, this program is very similar to Scratch. It teaches um, computer programming, but we're actually using something, another cultural art form called Afrofuturism. Afrofuturism is basically combining science fiction, global cultures, fantasy, history, you name it. Um, but what I found when I was looking at a lot of the artwork is they were using cultural art forms that are at the Smithsonian and around the world, such as cosmograms or mandalas, if you're on the Asian side, or Buddhism. And they're sort of portals to the future or maps of the universe. Um, so I realized these artists were doing that. So we created, there's a, oops, this is because I don't have pockets. <laughs> and I'm going to be moving around a lot anyway, so might as well just keep rolling with it. All right, so um, if you look at the picture, you'll notice that in the, on the left side of the screen, you see little things called codelettes. Those are blocks of code. In the middle, you stack the codelettes, sort of like Legos, to create the program that runs the animation. So in this case, the artist is Saya Wolfalk, and she does a lot of stuff in Mandala. She works with DJ Spooky, does this kind of stuff. She was, um, gave us permission to work with her. And so you can actually use math and use computer programming to do translation, dilation, all these kind of math concepts, and using a program that's very similar to Scratch. The other thing I did is I created categories to describe the kinds of things that artists were doing um, when they used technology, and created this sort of taxonomy that you could use to assess learning. So this was actually a part of my study at Georgia Tech when I got my PhD. So um, cutting, scratching, stamping, diagramming, all this kind of things that could be applied to math and science were also based on culturally relevant practices. Okay, so this is one of the innovators, Hank Shockley, at Boston Arts Academy um, last week. It hasn't been a week yet. Um, this is a freestyle rap cipher, again, circular, mandala, cosmogram. Um, but what I want to talk about is what we're doing in the space. So this is the STEAM lab, and this is, about, this is after the kids have started to, to work. But they're using software, they're kind of collaborating, they got all kinds of different equipment out, and they're sort of doing this collaborative audio project. But we also had um, an engineer and a co-founder of a startup in the UK visit at the same time. So we started breaking out different things. So I want to talk about the kinds of materials that we use in a STEAM lab 
to engage the young people who are coming to Boston Arts Academy. This <laughs> is a wooden board. <laughs> and this wooden board has, has, um, has been laser etched. Um, it's a mixer. Um, it's from Hank's logo. Um, it's an audio mixer. It has conductive paint on it. Um, and so when I, and it's now an instrument because of the paint. So the paint, so I'm gonna play it. Okay. Oops, I heard it for a minute. Let's restart it. So the idea of the making things digital interfaces, the students actually presented their design works to Hank so they could see how they were learning. So the idea that you could use any surface as an instrument the kids were really into this idea of using um, microcomputers or small computers to make different surfaces interactive, whether it's skin or wood or, and we've also been working with the company to do video projection. So each button would do something with animation or video. Um, so this idea of tinkering with things that artists already use, such as paint, fiber, or thread, but in a way that allows them to learn coding and learn math and science concepts is something that is important in the STEAM Lab at Boston Arts Academy. So um, one of the things, I, I guess, let me. <laughs> it's very responsive. So let me um, sort of wrap up and say what I really think is important for you in terms of idea is inclusion, inclusion is not only important for schools, it's important for any space. But what's really important is the idea that you're including people who are already engaged. They just may not be a part of the conversation, but they're out there. One way to do that is by sort of reaching out, like to Hank Shockley or to even the UK company that makes this paint and so on, and bringing these folks together to see what kinds of things you can come up, come up with in terms of tinkering and experimenting, mixing and sampling. So this is really this idea of bringing those folks who are not in STEM into STEAM. And that's basically what I came to say today. Thank you. Yeah, I was talking and demonstrating, forgot there's a video. And the one thing I want you to see in the video is for one minute is the engagement of the young people and the engagement of the artists of Hank Shockley in the room with these kids. Please, you know, it's fine. <laughs>